Yeah, I see it now. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for joining the webinar. I uh, want to apologize for starting a little late here. Uh, we were having some technical difficulties that uh, I think we've uh, finally got straightened out here. So I want to thank you guys for bearing with us on this. Um, today, and by the way, I'm Tony Butler with the Insurance Agency Marketing Services. I'm one of the life sales directors here. And uh, the month of May is Disability Awareness Month. So we had a disability webinar earlier this month and wanted to get uh, Rick Cadero, who is with Principal, um, on with us to uh, talk about some things that Principal offers um, that no other carriers do um, from a business aspect for your clients. Uh, so before we get started on the um, webinar topic, I uh, just wanted to uh, kind of talk you through some things that we do here at Insurance Agency Marketing Services. So we do have a new producers builders um, for agents that uh, come along the IMS, uh, get appointed with us. Uh, we provide additional perks, if you will, based on production levels. Uh, so as you see here, we've got about, um, well, I actually got five different levels here of different things that you can qualify for based on a production. Um, so you can get anything from um, additional marketing materials uh, to marketing dollars. Um, we do provide you, um, also there's a Ritz-Carlton package that's available. So if you have any questions in regards to our new producers builders, uh, please feel free to reach out to any one of your sales directors, uh, we'd be more than happy to uh, answer any questions that you might have on that. Next, we also have our IMS Business Builder, and this is um, our referral program for our advisors, meaning if you were to uh, refer an advisor over to Insurance Agency Marketing Services and that advisor gets appointed with any of the carriers that we work with, um, we do provide you with the $50 uh, bonus for that referral. It's our way of saying thank you um, for the referral. Any subsequent business that agent writes, he or she writes, um, there are additional um, spiffs, if you will, um, based on the type of business that they write. So it's a good way to um, increase um, your income stream as, as far as business coming into IMS just by you referring another agent that does write business. We offer back office support for you. Uh, we want to work. Um, we want you to work smarter, not harder. And we're here for you all the way from submissions to commissions. So what does that mean as far as back office support goes? Um, we offer paperless contracting that's available. We do have uh, business building tools and resources. Um, we do help with case designs. And when I say we, that would be any one of the sales directors, whether it's a case design for annuities or a case design for life insurance, um, disability, which what we're talking about today. So um, if you need help as far as life or annuity quotes, we're there for you as well. Um, there are forms that are available at your fingertips through our website. And as I speak about the website, as you see here, um, our website is uh, www.imsinc.com, 24 seven website. We have excellent sales tools available for you. Um, if you're a life agent, you can do term quote comparisons as well as universal life quote comparisons. Um, you can access forms, whether it's applications, um, or if you want to do electronic app, um, you have the ability to do that on our website. From a life insurance perspective, um, we have a couple of platforms um, available for you, um, whether it be iGo, eApp Solutions, which is on our website. We also have Firelight, which is another platform that's available. and with Firelight, you can get registered right through the IMS website. And as you see here, here are the carriers that are available right now through Firelight. Um, we are working with additional carriers to get them added as well. So if you have any questions as far as getting registered, um, definitely give us a call. We'd be more than happy to help you with that. Um, we also offer creative marketing solutions. So whether it's turnkey agency or digital solutions, um, we're here to help you with that. And what that means is if you're looking for assistance on newsletters or professionally written handouts or flyers, um, you want to kind of spruce up your logo or you were thinking about adding the logo to your business, uh, we can help with that. 
um, we can help with advertising. If you're looking to get in the digital marketing space, um, we can definitely assist you with that, um, whether it's a personal website design, um, digital marketing strategies. Um, we're here to help on that. Our creative team does an outstanding job of walking you through some of the things that they can do. Um, from a business perspective, if you're looking uh, to uh, increase revenue, um, kind of stuck right now because of the pandemic and you're looking to grow your business, I would suggest that you reach out to uh, one of your uh, marketing um, individuals and ask for a marketing analysis to be done. Well, your sales director can do is uh, do a marketing analysis where we'll do a deep dive into your business, what you're looking to do um, from standpoint of whether it's quarterly, um, annually, we can kind of drill down as to where we can see opportunities for you to help you grow your business. So definitely reach out to your sales director if that does interest you. We also offer a retirement analyzer. Uh, the retirement analyzer is there for our advisors to answer questions from their clients, such as, can I uh, retire without running out of money? Um, how would it affect my family if I were to die prematurely? Um, can I continue my present standard of living into my retirement years? Um, it is available on a trial basis uh, for qualifying agents. We still offer it free. Um, there is a cost for it. For those that um, don't qualify, when I say qualify, it's based on production. But if you need additional information on the Retirement Analyzer, uh, feel free to give us a call. We'll definitely walk you through um, how that works. We also have an IMS Wealth Management Team, and a Wealth Management Team is there for our advisors that have those higher net worth clients. Um, we've definitely seen where it has increased uh, the advisor's revenue. Um, has improved client retention and strengthened relationships with their clients. Um, definitely reach out to Charles Jr. and his team. If um, you have clients like that, they can talk to you about on what they offer. Lastly, uh, finally, as things are loosening up um, in regards to COVID, um, we finally have our first trip that's on the books, scheduled for um, June of 2022. Um, it is our top producer summit. It's a cruise getaway. As you see the uh, places that we will be going here, the qualification period is from 12-1 of 2020 all the way to 6-30 of 2020. 4.5 million points are needed to qualify. So uh, if this is something that uh, does interest you or where you need more information, we can definitely uh, provide that for you. If you want to see where you're at in terms of qualifying, um, we do have a list of all of our advisors and where they're at on that. We can give you information on that as well. So with that, um, Rick, you there? I am. Can you hear me, okay. Tony? Yep, I can hear you. So Perfect. I'm not going to switch you over to be the presenter, but what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, pull up your PowerPoint, okay. and then you can talk me through the different uh all right go back to the first page go yep. to page one there you go okay you see that yes sir okay so um rick go ahead and uh, take it away well thanks tony and i really do appreciate this opportunity to meet with uh your advisors and um, we're going to focus on the business marketplace and what i want to do is introduce you to two complementary programs that uh, the principal offers to, to advisors around the country. A little bit of history on this. These programs that we're going to introduce you to are programs that originally started many, not many years ago, a few years ago, um, as a way of um, encouraging our, um, what, what we call career agents, our proprietary distribution system to penetrate and have success in the business market marketplace, utilizing our staff of CPAs and attorneys. And me on the brokerage side said, hey, this is really good material. We'd really like to, to uh, distribute this and, and allow for our non-proprietary advisors to be able to take advantage of us. 
Um, everybody saw the value in this, and several years ago, we, we introduced it to all of our business partners. Let's go to the third slide, Tony. The second slide is disclaimer, yada, 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 bingo. Okay, so let's talk about, you know, if you are in the business marketplace or you want to get into the business owner marketplace, we think this is a very, very valuable tool to help you start that conversation. Now, keep in mind, I'm on the disability income side of the house. And so when I look at this and I and I go through this and the success I'm seeing with this, of all the tools, I've, I've just, on April 1st, I just celebrated my 40th year in the business. And of all the things that tools and ideas and concepts that, I've, that I have seen over the years, this is by far um, one of the most unique and interesting type of concepts to help you as an advisor maintain your position in the business marketplace or enter the business marketplace, okay? But let's talk about why do we work in the business owner market? Well, they play a vital role in our economy. We know that. And they also don't take a lot of time to do a lot of planning. And there's so many different opportunities within the business marketplace, not only disability and life insurance, but we're also talking about retirement savings and non-qualified and qualified plans. <clears throat> so there's so much opportunity within the business marketplace. Let's go to the next slide, Tony. When we take a look, and this is for done by a by the principal in our business owner survey conducted uh, by Harris Interactive back in 2019. And what we found is that there are several priorities that business owners have. Number one, 46, uh, no, the first priority obviously is business protection. And only 46% of them have a plan. Health and welfare solutions, obviously healthcare is, is big. Um, that's the second concern for most business owners. And that, that currently only 60% of them have this. And the third is income protection for them and their key people. That is the third biggest priority they have, but yet only 42% of business owners have any type of plan. So when you look at uh, uh, the, the priorities of business owners, we're going to focus on number one and number three today. And we think it's important because, you know, when you look at visiting with business owners and the typical conversation goes like this, hey, Mr. Business Owner, tell me about your health care program or tell me about your 401k program. It 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 what they do is incrementally um, are, are, are going to the business owners with very specific and very keen ideas and solutions. They don't take a holistic approach to their, their concept. Let's go to the next slide, Tony. What we have, and we, these are what I call, the, you know, people call them free, I call them complimentary, but we have two programs that are available to you. We have an informal business valuation program and a buy-sell agreement review program. Our informal business valuation program is done by our in-house CPAs. There is no cost to you and no cost to your customer. The buy-sell agreement review is done by our in-house attorneys. Again, there's no cost to you and or your customer. Let's go to the next slide, Tony. When you look at this uh, and we talk about what we do, first of all, let me focus on the business valuation. Many times we're meeting with a customer, we're meeting with a business owner, and all too often we avoid the con the, the 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 conversation. Hey, Mr. Let's talk, let's pretend Tony's my business owner. Tony, what is your business worth? What what are we talking about here? What what is the reality of of the value of your business today? And the answer will normally come come in one of three ways. Number one, I really don't know. Number two, I've got a dollar amount in mind if I'm a seller. And number three, and typically my my question back to them, if you're the seller, let's turn the let's turn the table and let's say you're the buyer. And that's a whole different story. <laughs> you know, I can sell it for a million, but I wouldn't buy it for a half a million. So when they have this type of um, image of what their business is, we think it's very, very important for them to have a clear understanding of what the value of X is, because that determines everything. Tell me what this is worth, and then we'll talk about moving forward. Now, this is what's called an informal business valuation. From what I have, to, have been told by our attorneys, 
the competitive cost rate for this can be somewhere between $3,500 and $7,500 for your customer to get a valuation, much more if it's a certified valuation. Now, keep in mind, this is not a certified valuation. It's nothing you could take to the bank, nothing you can, you can bank on. However, when we look at our valuations and we've compared them to certified valuations, our differences are within 5% either way. So we're doing pretty good. You see, my theory is that if, if you have two accountants in the room and two CPAs and you say, what's the, what, when you add two plus two, I'm thinking all four of them would come back with a number four. Okay. So knowing that it's, it's a, it's a science and an art form, but yet it's, it's not complicated when we look at the valuation. So what we do is prepare for your customer a customized informal business valuation and we deliver five methods used in our valuation. It could be it could it could be, you know, from assets to multiple of earnings to a number of different ways. But we think this is the first step in really creating a very successful exit planning conversation. Now, one of the key things about this is because I'm on the disability income side, the focus here should be not the individual who is 60 or 70 years old now thinking, wow, I want to get out of my business. What's it worth? We're talking about those entrepreneurial type of business owners who are in their 30s and 40s. This is really where it helps because then we can we can maintain and help them grow their business. And one of the things that we do know is that if you have a younger business owner, let's say in the 40s, who either dies or becomes disabled, and you compare that to the impact of a senior owner in their 60s or 70s, the financial impact to that company is far more devastating when you're talking to a business owner who's in their 30s and 40s, and it literally rocks that boat far much farther than it would if it was a 60 or 70 year old. So what we wanna do is plan for the unexpected, not necessarily create an exit planning strategy, but a strategy of growth and a, a strategy of protection. The buy-sell agreement, again, complementary, is a customized report very specific to their buy-sell agreement that they have. And what I have seen from my experience, I, and let me give you some experiences that I've had. I have seen buy-sell agreements where the named owners have long gone, are long gone from the business. There are shareholders in that where I'm sitting at a board table and I'm looking at two other shareholders in the business and making the comment, you're not even part of this buy-sell agreement, okay? Or the business model has changed significantly and the valuation methods that they use within the buy-sell agreement are not applicable. In talking to our attorneys, for every 100 buy-sell agreement they look at, roughly 95 or 95% 95 of those are antiquated and really do not achieve the goals that the business owner has because they created these buy-sell agreements back in the 90s or 80s or 2000s when they when they developed and created the business. But since then, that business has grown, their model has changed, the economy has changed. There are so many different things that are changing when the, within their environment that these buy-sell agreements are so outdated that they can be literally something that's going to be devastating and, and counter counter uh, counterintuitive to what they actually want to do, okay? And then we also talk about, we summarize the current funding provisions and options, and we address those as opposed to saying, you know, you know, you got to, you got to, within your agreement, you have an agreement that in the event of death, disability, divorce, you know, uh, you may have a disability, you know, termination, insolvency, bankruptcy, all these things are are, are, are in there. And there's also many times a provision for a disability, okay? What we find is that that provision for disability is so many times overlooked as a, and, and where they do not fund it, yet that buy-sell agreement is a binding commitment that says, yes, Tony, if you become disabled and after a certain number of a period of time, I have to write you a very large check, okay? And that, that really what we're seeing is that the opportunities in the disability income arena um, are, are unbelievable. But keeping in mind, it's not for those 60 plus people. We're talking about those business owners who are 
entrepreneurs and they're they're in the emerging market okay this is where we think number one it'd be more devastating to that company and number two these are people that are insurable let's go to the next slide tony <clears throat> let's talk about the informal business valuation okay and this is this is really key in my opinion this should be the first and foremost thing we do and you can couple it with the buy sell agreement a buy sell review but um under the current economic situations that we have what what effect has that had, that had on their business and and then what we also take a look at is let's take a look at the business itself okay what if they lose a key individual a key employee a key person or if they lose uh, one of the key owners okay and how could they potentially buy the business and for how much again the valuation defines for x and once we establish the value of x then we're able to circle the circle the camp and be able to start our protection type of 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 uh, program let's go to the next slide tony the buy sell review this one here is so valuable to us when we know the value of X and we currently look at their current buy sell agreement, okay, and what they have in place, is it clear? Is it deci decisive? Uh, does it address both the death and disability options? Is it properly funded in everything they're doing? Does it coincide with any agreement in terms they have and are they sufficient? And are the owners comfortable with the agreement? I think bullet point number three is probably the most important one. Many times we see maybe they have life insurance to fund the program, the buy sell agreement, but their their business has tripled in value since they started it, or the value of the business is, is greatly reduced. Okay. But again, being on a disability income platform that I am, where I see the most opportunity is that under the third, the first and and third, you know, as we talked about very beginning of this presentation. The priorities of the business owners is business protection and, and income protection. When we look at that buy-sell agreement, in most cases, it is never funded with a disability income buy-sell plan. Now, it doesn't have to be fully funded, but one of the unique things about funding a disability income buy-sell with some form of income disability policy and granted, we may not cover the full value of the business. We may just offer the down payment and the rest come out of revenue, but we now become the referee. And so now there's no question on who's going to determine who's disabled and who's not. You know, Tony, Tony calls me and says, listen, Rick, I think I'm disabled and I'm not going to be in, I'm not going to be coming to work for a while. Uh, I'm going to be asking some questions because, you know, Tony, you go a long period of time. I have to write you a very big check. And he goes, no, no, I really, I'm, I don't feel well. And I'm thinking, well, Tony, I don't feel well any day that I come into work either. But I'd like to, I'd like to have someone be a third party, a, a referee that help us determine this. And that's where that disability income policy and the strength of that company comes into play. So there's a lot of usage of that, and also for key person disability income. Let's say there's, you know, if we lost a key person, a salesperson or an individual who handles, you know, good example technology and we we have a technology or a cyber attack type of uh, protection and, and we want to have a, a, a good solid background and, and knowledgeable people. And if we lose that individual, that's going to take money to replace them and hire them and cover any any cause of a downtide in, in revenue. And so what we want to do is we want to take a look at the whole picture. OK, and this is what we do for for a business owner. And this is going to set you apart because what what most business owners, what they're seeing every day is an advisor coming in and saying, hey, let me talk about your 401k or hey, let me talk about your health insurance coverage or let me talk about your group benefits. OK, well, we what we do is we take a very holistic approach to this understanding that, number one, we know what the value of X is. Number two, we understand how they're going to exit the exit the exit the business you know most in, most business owners know how to get into business most business owners do not know how to get out of business and this is where we help them with that let's go to the next slide tony so when you look at all the solutions that are offered by principal 
The unique thing about Principal is we are the only carrier in the domestic marketplace today that offers each and every product solution in the market. Number one, from individual disability to multi-life employer offer programs to a disability income retirement security product that protects retirement contributions from overhead expense to business loan protection to key person to disability buyout. We're the only carrier in North America that does this. And let me tell you why we do this. For those of you who know Principal, maybe the Banker's Life of Iowa back in the day, we have always been, and it's been in our DNA, that we have focused on small to medium-sized business. That has been our focus market, that has been our comfort zone, and that's where we excel greatly. And when you look at, and, and you historically look at the products and services that we offer, you know, we're one of the very first carriers and, and, and plan administrators in the 401k marketplace. You know, non-qualified deferred compensation, um, you know, uh, just every, when you look at everything we do and how we comp, how disability, our, our disability income product portfolio complements our position in the small to medium sized business. Again, like I said, we are the only carrier. Let's take the key person. In the brokerage community, we are the only opportunity you have in that. There are several companies that, all, everybody writes individual disability, but several companies, well, not even several, two or three companies write uh, business over or disability buyout. Uh, there's two companies that write over, over uh, disability loan protection, retirement security. Maybe there's two companies. We, you don't have to go shopping with different carriers to solve your customers' needs. Let's go to the next page, Tony. So, how do you get started? We like to have for the business valuation. We have a request for proposal. It's a one-page form. Well, it's 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 a it's a, a category. I mean, it's like a, a infograph type of thing on page one, but the second page really gets into the details on what we're looking for, names of owners, percentage of ownership, and, and some general details that you can give us. We do need three years of their financials, including their income statement, balance sheet, and tax returns for the last three years. And uh, we typically, where we say five business days, that's about 10 or 15 business days today. Not because we're getting lazy, it's because this is a highly sought after program. So it does take a little bit of time. I do want to manage to your expectation. It's not going to be five days, trust me. Um, the business valuation, we do it, we do it right. This is not a program in a box. We're not inputting information in a computer. This is where CPAs are actually doing the work of a CPA and they're doing a very in-depth valuation for the company. The buy-sell review, what we need is complete the request for proposal, gather the, you know, what they currently have. We need a full copy along with any, any type of documentation or any plan documentations relating to their buy-sell agreement with any existing insurance funding agreement. So if they have life insurance or disability income, we need summaries of all those. And again, 15 business days is typical. That's where we're right. We're still doing that. Maybe 20 days for the buy-sell review. So these do take a little bit of time. This is not a turnaround quick time because what we want to do is make sure we do it right. Once we get the valuation and or the buy-sell review together, we will then send it to you for your review. Now what you can do with it is two different things. Number one, we will put you on the phone call and we will arrange, and, and this is where our CPAs on the valuation or the attorneys on the buy-sell review will make themselves available to review the documents with you. They will go over it with you, help you feel comfortable with it, give you their rationale between the valuation and the buy-sell, give you ideas. And then the next step we could do, <coughs> and this is totally at your discretion, our CPA and or attorney, will be able to and willing to get on the phone call with your customer and review all this information with your customer and answer questions they may have either with their CPA or their attorney, okay? So we're more than happy to share this information. We do not draft buy-sell agreements. All we do is help their attorney draft the plan for them. Okay, we are not attorney practicing attorneys developing and writing plans. What we do is we give recommendations for that. And so when you look at the value proposition here, you've got an attorney talking to an attorney and or you have a CPA talking to a CPA. 
The one thing we do require is that you as the advisor must be on every call and must be on every discussion, part of every discussion. We are always keeping you in the loop because in the reality of things, you, our, you are our customer, okay? Let's go to the next page, Tony. Our target market. Now we, we, we target 30 to 55 for this. This is our typical target market for our buy, sell, review and business valuation. Now, if you have an individual who's 60 or 70 years old, we're okay with that, but understand that there's not a lot of product valuation or product solutions available to that individual in the area of disability income. We're looking for attorneys, IT professionals, optometrists. I mean, we're looking at small to medium-sized businesses not C corporations, we do not value, a couple things we do not value. We do not value financial services companies or insurance agencies. We do not value um, farmland. Now, we do have a totally separate division that's in the ag market, which we do the same things, but, but that is a totally different situation and we have specialists who are in the agricultural market. And we'd like to have a business with less than 10 owners, okay? So that's the one of the, thing, one of the things. And we're also looking for businesses that have at least a $500,000 gross revenue. And this is some of the key marks that we'd like to look. Now, when you look at some of the businesses that we've done in the past, it could be any type of business. When we take a look at one of the most valuable businesses that we evaluated, now this was a couple of years ago, I'm sure we've seen better, but um, was a dog walking, uh, dog walking service in New York City. And this company was worth a lot of money, okay? And who knew it even existed? But there are little nuanced, little companies that um, are, are, you know, just funny little companies, but we'll take your traditional type companies too. Let's go to the next mark uh, page, Tony. Now, what we wanna do is in our position of being complementary in the business marketplace, what we've done is if we have a business owner, let's take out the business owner themselves, and they could be in the, uh, they could be in the electro, uh, you know, the electrical contractor, they could be a restaurant company, they could be a plumbing company, they could be, you know, a traditional blue collar company. And, and what we're doing is if you have the business owner that meets three different criteria, number one, they have 50% ownership in the business or more. They've owned this business for five years or greater, and they do less than 50% of the manual duties. We are able to take them from one occupation to another, occupation class. Now, occupation class and disability, the better the occupation class, the lower the premium. So I just want you to understand that. So if they meet this criteria of ownership, years of ownership, percentage of ownership, and manual duties. Now, I do want to tell you that if you have three owners doing owning 33 and a third percent, and, and they have five years of ownership, less than 50% manual duties, we're gonna look at that. But one of the key things is they must be under 50% manual duties and they must have five years of ownership. Now, if they meet that criteria, then we take a look at their earnings history, and then we take a look at the number of employees they have. So if they're making $60,000 and they have one to four employees, they would be a 3A occupation class for us which is a very competitive market if you're talking about a plumber doing 50% of the work, okay, and having five years of ownership and doing less than 50% of his time in the manual duty market. So it's, it's very, we could be very competitive. Let me give you an example of the most recent one we did. We had, we had a restaurant owner in Kansas City, Missouri. This restaurant owner is very successful, owns 75% of his business, making well over $150,000 a year with well over 50 employees. What we did is we compared what the competition would do. They would put him in the restaurant business. And by the way, he's 50% of his time, he is a chef, he's in the kitchen, okay? He came back with a 2A occupation class, a $4,100 premium. If we looked at the old rules, okay? A 2A occupation, uh, and $4,100 annual premium. What we then said, okay, let's take a look and how would we, how would he look if we utilize this concept, okay? Well, making over 150, well over 50 employees, he went from a 2A to a 6A. The end result was a premium of $4,100 versus a premium of $1,800. With this, my friends, we think as a value proposition. We love business owners, and this is our focus. Let's take a look at the next slide, Tony. Now, we've just recently, and this has been an introduction, we introduced this less than two weeks ago. 
We're saying if you have a small plumber, small plumbing business, or you have a small electrical contractor, and he only has three years of ownership in the business, and he has only three employees in addition to themselves, and they could be subcontractor manual labor people, and they're making at most $30,000 a year net income. So we're not talking the big shop. We're talking you know, the, this year, the mom and pop, these are the, the bread and butter, the, the salt of the earth, three years of ownership, two, you know, three employees that are, could be subcontractors making at least $30,000 a year. What we need for this is we need information on the customer along with their most recent tax return. And we, we will do what's called the preliminary underwriting. And we will give you two offers. One offer is based on what the rate book says that person would be, and the other offer will be making that individual, which would be a class A by what, by the way. These are class A individuals for better m m several 2A occupations. If you give us that information and we approve, we will take that person from a class A to a 3A occupation. And let me tell you, there's a 40, uh, the difference between a 2A and a 3A is about 30 to 40% savings in premium. OK, so you will have two different offers to give that individual saying, OK, you got offer A or you may have offer B. This 3A occupation in this traditional blue collar market, we're not looking at the employees. We're looking at the business owners, three years of ownership, at least three employees making thirty thousand dollars a year. We call it three plus three plus three equals three A. This will help you in an area that has traditionally been disenfranchised. A lot of people are not looking for this blue collar business owners and, and we love them, okay? So keep that in mind. Let's go to the next slide, Tony. Let's take a look at a case study. When we utilize the disability, or not the disability buyout, but the buy, sell, review, and business valuation, we had a consulting firm, okay? Uh, the producer and the owner met on a snowboarding trip. Uh, what they wanted to do was a client goal was the explained employee benefit package and then the fund a buy sell agreement. What the what the advisor did, he offered the complimentary buy sell review and informal business valuation, and it helped that client solve the problem. I will tell you when we take a look at compensation, on the average small to medium sized business case, an advis advisor who goes in piecemeal will make about fifteen hundred dollars. That's what we're finding the fifteen hundred dollar revenue that to you. We are now seeing you go into this with a holistic approach with tying in the valuation, you tie in the business business uh, buy-sell review, you properly fund the business as prescribed by all the written legal documents, the, the average compensation to the advisor is about 15,000. So we're, we're creating revenue for you, but not only that, we're creating a relationship between you and that customer that is going to be longstanding, uh, you know, could be permanent for a lot of people, but yet you're going to be able to uh, dig down deep and then offer benefits to the employees, create trust with that employer, and really become their partner as opposed to an advisor. Let's go to the next slide, Tony. I think that's, uh, we're almost done here. Okay, so again, um, you know, there's a lot of solutions, not only with the individual disability, buyout, term life insurance, key person replacement, both life and disability, life insurance and 401k. When you look at all these things, not only are we going in there with an idea of, of you know, what, they pro what problems they have and what solutions we have, but we do it, like I say, on a holistic way that makes sense. And we've tied in during this whole process, we've got their, their CPA and accountant at the table, we have their attorney at the table. We have our attorney and CPA at the table. And more importantly, we have the business owner and you at the business table having these conversations. So let's go to the next slide, Tony. I want to open it to any questions, if you have any. All right, I'm going to check our, our question field here and see if we have any. Oh, looks like. We do here. All right, so first question, I know the focus here is on business owners, but do you also offer individual disability plans? And I think absolutely. you answered that earlier, as in yes. Yes, absolutely. The individual disability income plans is our bread and butter. We're, we're the number two provider of non-cancelable disability income in North America today. 
so from an individual side of things, what would you say your target market would be as far as occupations, uh, maybe income? Would you say that you well, guys we're looking focus at people, more on? Yeah, we're looking at people who, um, Tony, this is a great question. You know, people go bro blue collar, white collar, gray collar. Right. Let me kind of give you the way I look at it, Tony. And I, tr I, I try to put things in a very simplistic way. Our customers take a shower before they go to work as opposed to when they come home from work. If, if if you can visualize, I don't know if you want to visualize that, but I mean, if you can, <laughs> if you can get that, I mean, if you can see that, what I'm trying to say here is when do they take a shower? When do they, you know, do they, do they do it before they go to work or when they come home from work? It's a real simple concept, making 40,000 a year. Now they, a lot of our customers have underlying group long-term disability income. And a lot of people say, well, that's a good reason. Well, you know, we don't have to talk about it, but about 85% of the business we do, we supplement on a group long-term disability income plan because those plans are insufficient, in particular for business owners and, and highly comp people. Um, so you bring us bring us whatever case you have, we'll try to work with you. And, um, and the nice thing, Tony, you guys will have an opportunity or options for virtually every market. And so with IAMS, you know, as far as your, your, your BGA and your backroom support, but come to me, let me know what you've got, and I'll, I'll be straight up with you. I'll tell you, is this a good fit for us? Yes or no? And, mm -hmm. and we'll put our best foot forward for you. Okay, does anyone have any additional questions? Waiting for, see if any other questions come across. So while I'm waiting for that, I, I have a question for you, Rick. Um, okay. Right now, how are you seeing the, um, disability marketplace i know a, a lot of advisors you don't see a lot of agents that are you know primary disability uh, you know agents that's kind of an ancillary product they may or may not offer um, what would be your um, advice on those individuals that are interested in talking about disability as far as a door opener um, what questions to ask because I think okay. the, the feedback that I've always gotten from agents, well, I don't sell disability. And, you know, I always talk about, you don't have to be an expert in that, but, you know, get the conversation starting. Your perspective, what do you think a good conversation starter is? Well, let's, let's, let's do this, Tony. Let's think, you know, I'm a fundamentals guy, okay? Mm -hmm. Always been blocking, tackling, you know, type of guy. When you look at this, let's really identify what we do in our business. We are risk managers. We help people manage the risk based on three different criteria. Number one, the risk of dying too soon, mm -hmm. the risk of living too long, and the risk of becoming sick or hurt, okay? Now let's talk about the risk of living too long. This is where 95% of advisors in our marketplace today, and I've talked about advisors, I'm talking about insurance people, bank companies, uh, wire houses, 95% of advisors today are in the space of acquiring assets and managing assets. The term assets under management is key to those 95% of them, okay? Now you got the other 5% in our space, in our market, call them, calling themselves in that financial service industry that identify as risk managers focusing on the risk of dying too soon, living too long, and becoming sick or hurt. They have the trifecta. They're focusing on those risks where 95% of the advisors are focusing on the risk of living too long and outliving their money. That's retirement planning, okay? Now, what we do know, and this is according to LIMRA, of those people in that 5% group, okay, that are focusing on the three-legged stool of, of protection, those individuals, number one, make more money than the individuals in the other group. Number two, have longer persistency with their customer and their policyholders. Number three, this is the interesting one for me, they have more assets under management than those who focus on at, collecting assets under management, okay? Um, and uh, let's see, oh, did I say they make more money? Yeah, okay, and oh, mm -hmm. and they'll be in the business longer. They have a, they have a larger, a, a much greater um, success rate in staying in this business than those who are just asset managers. So let's think it through. Want to make more money, be in the business longer, have longer relationships with your customers, and manage more assets than anybody that's that's in that business? I'm trying to think what the downside is. 
You know what I'm saying, Tony? I just, mm -hmm. I'm just, it boggles the mind. But one of the things that a lot of advisors are reluctant to have a talk about income replacement is because they feel it's complicated. They feel it's the long, you know, time consuming, and they don't want to risk all their other assets under management or life insurance cases. I've talked to brokers and agents say, Rick, I would love to write disability, but I don't want to jeopardize my relationship with my customer if you guys decline him or rate him or write or him or do something with the eye. Well, you know, I said, well, that's that's okay. I understand that. But what if your customer does become disabled and they give you a call and they call you and say, hey, Tony, you know what? Um, I didn't die. Uh, I can't make any more contributions to my retirement plan. You as my advisor, you're my advisor, Tony. What What do I do? What can I do, Tony? And I'm thinking, you know, you don't want to risk your relationship with your customer. Well, let me tell you, that's going to be a real tough conversation you're going to have with your customer. If he, if he or she calls you or his spouse calls you and says, Tony, I, uh, you know, uh, you know, Mary became disabled. She's not able to work. It's causing a real financial pick. Uh, you know, we're in a financial pickle here. What do I, what can I do? And me as that advisor is going to say, well, you've been putting money in your retirement plan. Let's start taking it out now. Or let's take out the cash value in your life insurance. Or let's start selling your home. Let's sell your car, downsize. You know, those are those are not the conversations you want to have with your customer. You want to say to them, you know what? Thank, thank goodness we bought income replacement for Mary and you, Tony, that says if you became sick or hurt, we're going to replace a good portion, if not all of your income. And so why don't you guys go ahead and worry about, let's, let's talk about this. There's two things you want to worry about while you're disabled, okay? Number one is managing the pain and and living and staying alive the third thing if you don't have income replacement now you got the pressure of how am i going to make my house payment do i have to take the kids out of school um out of out of college um do i have to sell the car do we need to sell the home how am i going to pay for my health insurance because that was offered to be my my company i mean people don't understand the consequence of becoming sick or hurt and once you have that conversation say tony I'm going to disable you today. Let's say today was the last day you can work. Tell me what's going to happen. And if you're not comfortable with that, Tony, we have solutions. Let's talk about it and let's bring an expert in. Okay. Call you guys, call Tony, get that thing up, set up. I'm more than happy because I work for you. You, you guys are the advisors. You want to put me on the phone call, the three of us, you, your customer and myself, and we'll talk through this. I'm more than happy to do that. Okay. My job is to help you. And um, and so, you know, if we're not talking about income replacement, okay, and helping people manage their manage the risk of becoming sick or hurt, um, then we're really missing something because the reality in reality, we all sell life insurance because of one in one hundred and seventy chance that a person's going to die before age sixty five. There's a one in seven chance that your customer is going to become sick or hurt and lose their job for at least thirty one months. Now you tell me if you're a risk manager, I'm looking at the odds one to seven versus one to 170. I, I think there's something drastically wrong in the way we're thinking here. You make an excellent point when you say risk manager, because right. at the end of the day, what disability insurance is doing is it's managing the risk in regards to protecting your income because your ability to earn a living is your, you know, if you prioritize it, that's going to be your top priority is protecting um, you being able to earn an income because without oh, yeah. that, you're not yeah. able to pay for those insurance policies. You're not able to make, uh, you know, mortgage payments and, and no. things like that. Well, why, why do people work? I mean, obviously there's great satisfaction. I get great satisfaction in doing what I do. I love what I do, but you know what? Uh, people go to work to, to make money and that money is used to, like you said, you know, the fundamentals of life, it, their, their income determines the home they live in, the car they drive, the school they send their children to, the clo the food they eat, you know, everything. And, and so we strongly encourage you to have that conversation with your customer, because if you're not, someone else will, okay, and then they are going to create that trust with that customer and loyalty to that customer. And the life insurance, the retirement plan, whatever you're doing for that customer is probably not going to be around very long. Great stuff. Got a couple of polling questions here that I want to uh, address. I do have uh, another question here, Rick. I think we'll finish on this because this has to do with contacting you. 
um, but I have a few polling questions that I want to get out here to everybody before we end the webinar. Um, first polling question that I have is, um, if you'd like more information on what we've discussed today, um, I've launched that polling question. Make sure that you answer that. Be sure to get you additional information. Now, outside of the PowerPoint, Rick, is there additional information that you can provide that um, we can send out to those that are yeah, interested Tony, in getting additional um, information? What I will do is I will send you the uh, request for proposal on the okay. buy-sell review business valuation. And awesome. that way you can forward it off to anybody who's interested. That's the actual, you know, the uh, I'll send you a PDF of it. And uh, you can send that out to them and they can copy everything. And it gives all the instructions on how to do it and, and where to send it. And it's important that you put Tony's name on there and my name on there so we can track it and um, and make sure that it, it flows within, you know, the, the confines of IMS. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're good. All right. Okay. Next polling question that I have here is going to be, I spoke about market analysis before and we've had great success in regards to market analysis and if you're in a situation where you want to um, take a, a look at um, what you can do additional to help you know grow your business we'd be more than happy to sit down with you and do a marketing analysis um, we like i said we've had a great deal of success with our advisors on that um, so i strongly encourage um, those of you um, that this kind of piques your interest to definitely do it only takes about 20 to 30 minutes to do. Um, we'll evaluate the information that you provide, um, have some uh, solution suggestions for you probably within a week. So I'm going to leave that up for a little bit because I see that I've got some people that are responding yes to that. So we want to make sure that we reach out to you um, and get that done. So I'll leave this up for a few more seconds, then I'll close it down and then have one more polling question. All right, so let me close that out. And last one, if you're not appointed with principal and you'd like to get appointed with principal, we more we would be more than happy to, to get that done for you. So I've got a polling question here. Uh, make sure that you respond to that and we'll get the necessary uh, paperwork out to you. More or less a link uh, where you can do that electronically. So I'll leave this up for a little bit. Um, and as you can see here, if you have any questions post our webinar, um, you can reach out to me. Uh, as you see, my email address is Tony at Um We have, also have two other life sales directors. Um, they are in our Topeka office, Justin Ford, and his email address is Justin at imesinc.com. And then we have Jess Riley. And his email address is Jess with an E, but it's still Jess um, at imesinc.com. For content like this, um, we do have a Facebook page that you can follow um, us and a LinkedIn page. So you can like and follow us, um, whether it be on our Facebook page or our LinkedIn page, um, as you see here. Uh, definitely do that. Um, we pride ourselves on providing a lot of marketing material uh, to our advisors. And when I say providing marketing materials, we're talking about different sales ideas and concepts that have been tested and true to helping our advisors grow their business. So it's we talk about product, absolutely. But what we pride ourselves on is being able to have those conversations with our advisors in regards to um, some of the things that you can do to grow your business. Um, I would say from an advisor standpoint, whether it be on the uh, annuity side of things or on the life side of things, um, we have an extremely knowledgeable team that can provide um, all types of answers and solutions for you. So uh, definitely feel free to reach out to us. Uh, Rick, do you have any closing uh, thoughts? or words um i really don't i would suggest that everybody just you know if you do have questions send them to tony and um or if you have a proposal request or here's another thing too um think about yourself do you own adequate amount of disability income insurance on yourself because what we do at principal is if you're an advisor and you want to uh, you think maybe you need some additional coverage 
we are giving discounts to advisors today to buy disability income on themselves. Now, there's two reasons we like this. Number one, you need more coverage, obviously. Number two is that you're going to experience uh, what our capabilities are from the e-application to e-signature to the online part B and all the different things that we do. And you'll be appointed with principal. That way you can have access to um, our advisor digital site and track your business, get great marketing pieces and becoming appointed um, with IAMS, IAMS and having access to all their stuff too. So, you know, it's now's a good time. Take a look at yourself and say, listen, hey, if I became sick or hurt, and not was not able to work, do I have adequate amount of protection? I may have group insurance or may have an old policy I bought back and who knows when, but take a look at yourself. You know, it's very, very hard to sell a product that you don't own yourself. So we strongly encourage advisors that we work with to, to go through the experience of buying the policy, taking a look at becoming familiar with the proposal, and I'll go over that with you. And then in addition to that, um, Obviously, you're going to make commission dollars on it, and then you're going to get a, a permanent and portable discount that, that will stay with that policy for the rest of your career. So we think it's a pretty neat idea. All right. And that last question, um, I had an advisor ask, how do they contact you, Rick? Would you like that? Contact uh, contact yep. yep. They can contact or? me at um, my email address is Cordero, C O R. D like a David, A R O dot Rick, R I C K, at principal, P R I N C I P A L dot com. Or they can visit my website. Uh, oh, and my phone number is 515 480 9603. Or visit my website at www.principal.com backslash Cordero, my last name. And that will introduce you to my whole team, what we do, some marketing pieces in there, some thought starters. Um, and uh, there's there's also information on, on what we discussed today, the buy, sell, review, and business valuation. Well, with that, Rick, I wanna thank you for taking the time out um, to do this webinar with us. It's always good to talk to you. Uh, yeah, good talking to you, Tony. I know we get the conversation a lot during Disability Awareness Month, but it should be Disability Awareness Month every month of the year. So, yeah, I'm again, good with that. Yeah. So, again, thank you, everybody, for uh, attending. Um, hope you're having a great week. Uh, have a great Friday as well as a great weekend. For those of you that were looking for additional information, definitely uh, reach out to you and get that information out to you. So, thanks again for everybody for attending, and you guys take care. Thanks, Rick. Thank you.